Hi, everyone. So uh, this talk is just after the lunch, so expect some burbs, OK? And uh, so even uh, because oxidation has kicked in in the belly, right? And uh, some of us might feel sleepy. So uh, uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon to the online watchers, OK? Those who will watch this live stream after some time. This is my second, uh, this is my first Linux Foundation event and that too as a speaker, so a big thing for me. Uh, today's talk topic is about hotfix, right, and uh, securing the vulnerable images with Copa. Uh, something about me, I'm the founder of kubecloud.tech. Uh, previously, I worked as a tech lead at uh, a company and then multiple companies I worked as a tech lead and now I am working as a founder. So actually I, I founded the company in January and I submitted the CFP in December. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it's showing as independent. Uh, I'm not an ambassador, okay, unfortunately, like all of us. I'm not a, like many, I'm not a CNCF ambassador or HashiCorp ambassador. Uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, where we teach uh, Kubernetes and cloud native stuff and the name is Tech with Prerit. And also I'm a part-time certificate collector. I have CKA, CKS and uh, how many of you have CKA, CKS, CKAD certification? Anyone? No? <laughs> okay, so maybe I'm just part-time certificate collector. I have nine in Google Cloud, 14 in Azure and like that. And the talk level is any, so that anyone who is even a beginner in uh, patching, because everything is about container plumbing and how to, like plumbers do multiple stuff, right? They, uh, they reinvent or they fix the issues, they replace the uh, wrong working parts, right? So the talk level is any. Uh, today's agenda will be why and what. First of all, we will be seeing what is actually patches, uh, patching doing, okay, in this entire HDLC cycle. Uh, second, uh, like, are patches, like, can patches really work in production or in even staging phases? And uh, some other alternatives to COPA. Uh, in the later end, we will be looking at COPA and the architecture, the tech stack used behind COPA and everything. And in the end, a live demo. And uh, I know uh, from the morning, we all are seeing security in containers, right? Kata container, Jiva, Azure, sandboxes, what not, Karen. And, but this is totally a different concept. So uh, if in the middle, I get a little bit low energy, low on energy, then you guys just hoot, okay? If I see uh, that you guys are not uh, in the right energy, I will crack a joke. I will try. <laughs> so uh, let's start. So this is the SSD uh, cycle, okay, secure software cycle, and uh, like this at every phase we need to introduce security. But even after introducing security to every phase, there is a time when uh, some CVs come out of the way, right? Recently, the XZ exploit, if you know, right, it came out of the blue and it could have impacted everything, right? Everything. Uh, so these things can happen no matter if you are a very pro in security, your organization has applied n number of policies on runtime, on compile time, you, have, you are using multiple tools, you are using observability, you are doing XXX things, okay? These things can happen and that's the reason uh, I chose uh, the thing, but <laughs> actually why, okay? Why in, on earth we need patches? Uh, so which one is your favorite, left or right? Right, right? <laughs> so uh, the first thing is uh, you need patches. First thing is uh, for modernizing applications. Uh, for example, you are just shifting your current container image to a new architect or new base image. Then for the time being, you can apply patches. Second is for compliance reasons, right? Uh, Though mid-scale companies, like I have founded my company, we, we are not <laughs> related to any compliance thing, but at big scale, you are bounded with compliance. Third thing is there are, in the strict release cycles, there are OS updates, right? Uh, there are dependency upgrades, and uh, 
last but not not the least there are cves com, uh, common vulnerability uh, okay so uh, uh, th th these are the uh, few reasons to learn about patching and stuff okay this is a slido link can you just scan and put out your thoughts i want this session to be interactive right so just scan that qr code and uh, just tell me if you have applied patches in production okay or have you ever rebased okay have you rebased your particular image because whenever i saw recordings from the internet from youtube i found that the sessions were not interactive okay so i'm trying to be as interactive as i can uh, just tell me uh, uh, what's your take and uh, here yes all the time okay let's see how many just fill it fill anything okay and it should be in code of conduct i have co i have written code directly into prod <laughs> okay who is this <laughs> okay okay <laughs> don't tell your company name <laughs> okay so there's three people okay no issues uh and uh, yeah so like you uh, i asked chat gpt uh, what uh, like how to resolve vulnerable images in containers and this is all the thing that it returned monitor maintain okay and uh, update base images identify vulnerabilities rebuild the images and all that stuff like uh, a lot of garbage okay uh, so there are two things uh, on which we will be talking about first thing is rebasing second thing is patching okay i am more concerned toward patching in this scenario because uh, the these are the two techniques through which you play around with images in production in staging in any kind of environment and uh, rebasing versus patching uh, so let me give you a brief intro about rebasing so uh, rebasing means uh, like all the images are made up of different layers right and at different layers they may have some base image or some image which has some vulnerabilities so in rebasing we just remove the base and like replace that particular base layer with some other layer okay rebasing is that stuff but patching patching involves around adding a particular uh, not changing the base image not changing the under underlying file directory but applying something on top of the existing images okay so that uh, because there are multiple things if you go into rebasing you have to keep an account on the layers the file directory the pack packet managers and all that stuff but in patching there is no need to deal with those things you just have to apply a layer on top of the built image so i asked google search okay uh, and uh, uh, they replied with this thing if you need to create a new image go for rebasing make image to existing image then patching is a good option and uh, like you can see the rest of the two options okay so rebasing is like this okay uh, so this is the uh, archi architecture from build packs okay another tool for building images and we will not go that much deep into re rebasing because the agenda is patching uh, okay so why do we need a patch uh, first thing is as soon as the vulnerability is exposed because according to a particular uh, re, uh, what we say uh, uh, survey by Pal palo alto networks it said that in 15 minutes uh, once a vulnerability is exposed or declared the attackers go back to their work okay they scan they scan your uh, development staging production every kind of containers those are running that particular cve they have their sophisticated tools we will no, not go that much deep but in in the very first 15 minutes they go and check for the vulnerabilities second thing is if time is ticking okay and uh, if it's a friday evening <laughs> so we want to get back to our uh, off, uh, to home and party so it may happen that you are in a hurry and it's a friday evening and the last thing is immediate release or compliance need because uh, like patching is a very short term solution in terms of security or even adding some changes to your particular image this is not a long lasting solution this is what patch means okay just applying a patch uh, to like adding a layer or keep preventing the things from going out okay and these are some other memes okay uh, 
what is the root cause of uh, uh, like CVEs and uh, why do we actually need uh, patching? The first thing is, as I said, there are multiple layers and it may happen that one layer you doesn't have, you don't have any control over it. Okay. It may be due to maybe dependent on some third party app. Okay. There may be some multiple dependencies and you are not responsible for that particular base layer or base image and uh, multiple layers can be there, which will arise, which will give uh, the uh, the the birth of uh, multiple issues and uh, this these are the two reasons uh, for patching and here comes copa uh, copa actually it's not the real name uh, the real name is copa setic okay in short we call it copa it is a cncf sandbox project and uh, i think it was developed by microsoft and then donated to cncf as far as I can recall, um, it is not just another like CI CD tool or another whole wholesome tool to play around with images, build image, scan image and all that stuff. It is just a CLI tool to scan for your uh, to apply patches. That's it. It will not only it will also not scan for vulnerabilities. It will use the already created uh, scanners and it will take a report out of it and then apply a patch to that particular image. We will see in the demo section how to apply that patch. And uh, the next thing is, the next advantage is, it uh, it will lead to no more rebuilds. Uh, the, uh, the sole criteria behind uh, patching is not to rebuild, okay? Which, because rebuilding which will eventually lead to cache eviction, right? And uh, for example, you have thousand images in your production running and you have to apply you have to rebuild every particular image, then you will lose a lot of cash, which will eventually increase your turnaround time to to update the image, create the image, and then apply it to production. Okay, and uh, uh, the next thing is, uh, it can also patch the existing containers without the need of more uh, addition of tools. Okay, and uh, n there is no change required in your existing infra, just a CLA tool and a manual step, that's it. Because hotfix it itself means that it is just a short term solution till some senior engineer comes in and solves the issue. And for all, it is for all and uh, there is no need to be a Kubernetes expert. You just need to know about Trivi. Okay, right now it supports Trivi that uh, and you can also build some custom scanners. It has a plugin architecture and you can obviously build uh, something on top of it. Right now, we just have one custom scanner and uh, Trivi is by default supported by Copa. And uh, yeah, the pros are no extra dependent tool and uh, pa it can pass the existing containers. You can integrate it with the CICD uh, pipelines. It, ha it already has a GitHub action on the GitHub repo and uh, it works on BuildKit. Okay, who knows what is BuildKit? Okay, okay. Just four people out of many. Uh, I will also talk about what is build kit, but in very brief. Uh, but the only con that this particular tool has is it only works for the OS level vulnerabilities. It never works on the application side because it doesn't know how your application image is built. It doesn't know anything about it. So the only thing it scans for is OS level vulnerabilities. Uh, this is the architecture diagram. Okay, uh, just and uh, just look at it uh, right away, and we will implement it. So first of all, you scan an image with some open source scanner, for example, Trivi. It will create a JSON file. Okay, it will create a JSON report, which will get passed by, which we will pass to the Copa, and the Copa will parse it. It will work uh, under the hood on LLBs and build kit. And then it will create a patch layer and then the patch layer will be applied to that particular image. This was the architecture diagram and now we will see what is build kit. Okay, so build kit comes in Docker desktop by default. Uh, you, like Docker was very clever and you guys don't even know build kit is already enabled. Uh, the main reason of build kit is that it is, it is type of a DAG. Uh, how many of you know what is a DAG? Directed acyclic graph. So, it is a type of DAG, but it is implemented in form of LLBs. Okay, uh, I will show you what is L what does LLB looks like. Um, okay, so this is uh, 
some sort of you can say LLBs look like and uh, 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 so the main advantage is that due to LLBs these uh, all the staging all the processes can be done multi multi like pipelining can be done multi processing can be done and it will eventually lead to better resource management and uh, uh, like it will reduce the uh, build time and uh, by default docker has adopted it and it is ad adopted by build packs dagger and uh, nix okay so a lot of uh, tools have already adopted build kit and uh, you can play around with uh, with it okay so this is the basic architecture your image is sent to front end then front end is sent is parsed to llb and llb then is taken by build kit which uh, works on it and do all the stuff uh, there are two uh, playlists as well uh, two video links as well of kubecon uh, i think 2022 where you can learn more about the uh, build kit part okay and uh, there are other uh, alternatives as well just like build packs okay build packs has some like the underlying architecture is different but build uh, using build packs you can just rebase uh, the images in very minimal time so this is about uh, the alternates and uh, my advice would be don't apply too many patches because and even if you want to apply too many patches apply on the very first base image don't apply patch on a patched image patched on a patched image okay so it will create a uh, ruckus in your systems and because patches 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 then <laughs> it, it it shouldn't be there okay uh, and it's the time for some action uh, let me okay so i am doing this in my uh, i've already installed trivi okay uh, the first thing is to run uh, the copa you need to have build kit running uh, so you can either run build kit as a container or a daemon or as a service totally depends on you i will be running it as a container okay i'm very bad at commands so i've already made a list <laughs> and uh, just bhagwan help karna meaning demo gods please help me uh, uh, because uh, this is my first demo okay not thank you for the ending uh, where was i Uh, so this is okay so i will export uh, the build kit version uh, and uh, okay i've exported the build kit version now i will run the build kit as a privileged container and uh, uh, let's run this particular command okay let's confirm it docker ps okay it's running and uh, you can specify other version depending on your choice okay so uh, now i will be taking the example of redis 7.0.4 yes this is a very old image and this is the reason uh, because new images really have the vulnerability in redis so i'm picking redis for this particular demo uh, trivi if you don't know trivi uh i will be also taking from the very basics trivi is a tool to scan vulnerabilities made be os level may the maybe the severity is critical high or medium so i will first scan this particular image and as i was playing around with it one hour ago so it took it from the cache as you can see uh, there are multiple uh, uh, what we say uh, dip, uh, the issues are uh, multiple medium high critical so for example i want to see the severity of critical then i will just pass it severity is equal to critical and it will scan over it and there are three uh, the status is affected fixed and will not fixed uh, i want to just scan for the not uh, the fixed one okay okay i did this part and now this thing okay what happened okay and uh, this particular command will scan for all the types of uh, os level vulnerabilities in the redis 7.0.4 and as you can see there are a lot of things going on 
uh, high, low, critical, and I want to ignore the unfixed part. So I will pass a flag, ignore, unfixed. Okay. Okay. So it has returned a lot of things, uh, but I want to again go for critical or high one. I will uh, pass the flag again, severity, critical. And here you can see there is just one vulnerability as the, at the OS level, uh, that is CV20214684848. If you want to dig deep, you can go and uh, uh, Google it, but uh, I'm not going to do that. And uh, now what I will do is I will store, uh, as I showed you in the architecture diagram, it will create a rep, it will create a report. And uh, this is the command to create that particular report. Uh, okay. So this will create a report with the name cpd redisjson If you want to get into it, we will just go and see how it looks like cpd redis dot json okay so again it is in the json format we will no, not go that much deep and this is the only command that you need to run to apply the patch uh, it will take the image name then it will create uh, it, it will read that particular report and it will add a tag now adding a tag uh, it totally depends on your uh, company okay some add hyphen 0 0.1 there are two types one is dynamic tagging and second is static tagging static means you are just adding 0 then hyphen 1 2 3 uh, 1 2 3 and dynamic means you are uh, like you are making it a same name and then uh, you, you are changing the part subsequent tag, uh, tags, okay? So you can uh, obviously go that deep and uh, you can search it on Google, how, what is static tagging and dynamic tagging. So I will just run this particular command and this will uh, do the work and the patch is getting applied. Uh, it, 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 now in the backend, what it is doing is it will call the build kit part Build kit is work, uh, creating the LLBs and uh, uh, the main function uh, of LLB that this particular tool is working on, it is working on the merge op and uh, diff op. So if you don't know, there are multiple operations like merge op, diff op, exec op, and this particular tool is working on uh, merge and diff ops. Obviously you can, I will add link to the GitHub repo and you can go deep into deep afterwards. Now uh, it is saying the image is patched. Let me scan uh, this particular image, okay? Just to make sure that there is no vulnerability. Uh, okay, why it is Okay, now let's scan and uh, it will show zero critical, okay? And this way we have already applied a patch. Now one, one thing, uh, few people might be interested on seeing the layers. So there is a tool named Dive, okay? Dive is a tool that you can uh, download it on Brew, like using Homebrew on Mac. And you can just scan all the layers. It will re uh, return you all the information about that layer size and everything about that particular image. So uh, this is how it looks. So if you want to go into different layers, then you can go, if you want to, see what's uh, like what are the permissions of that particular layer content you can go into that and uh, this will give you a very good overview of that particular image with all the layers sizes and all those permissions things okay you can use tab to go into different different layers and different things so this was dive and uh, i think uh, two three commands are left and uh, obviously if you guys know about rego you can apply uh, you can create a rego file uh, to like it is still in a very uh, early thing but you can obviously write a rego file and then play around with it uh, now some people might be interested like uh, to see what it is actually doing in the back end so for that you can pass the hyphen hyphen space debug thing and it will show you what it is actually doing behind the scene okay so you can use hyphen hyphen debug and uh, the next thing is uh, i think we are done right 
past thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, there is one thing, OpenVex. OpenVex is uh, a standard uh, defined for the output thing, okay? So I will also show you. So OpenVex is the implementation of vulnerability exploitability exchange. So it will show, it is an output format in my uh, point of view. So it also supports VEX and this is the simple command. Uh, you just have to format it into a VEX thing. Uh, okay, no inc incognito. Okay, my screen is stuck. Okay, oh, my screen is stuck. Uh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Just hold a sec. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so uh, just a uh, format you have to pass OpenVex and then it will return that particular report in OpenVex. So this was about applying a patch. Uh, if you have any doubts, I would be happy to answer. Any doubts? <laughs> Okay. You ready for questions? Yep. Okay. Questions, anyone? Okay. I think ap applying patches is a, a lot of easy task. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. I think nobody has any questions. Okay.